Hello everyone, and today we're going to be doing a review on the Samyang 35mm f2.8 lens for Sony full frame mirrorless cameras. Let's get straight into the video. So when you buy the lens, you'll get obviously the lens itself, and you'll get this pretty cool little carrying case for your lens as well. And getting straight to the build quality of the lens, it isn't the most premium feeling lens in the world. It does feel quite cheap, and this lens cap is kind of interesting. So you have this little part that can come off relatively easily and when you take this lens cap off you've got a 40.5mm filter thread on it however when you take this piece off you get a more traditional 49mm so if you have 49mm lens caps you can use that and put this on the lens instead of using this because also something else about this is that it doesn't actually click onto the lens so if I just put this on here you can hear that it's quite loose on there. Obviously it will stay on, but it is just something you want to keep in mind if you have UV filters or polarizers for bigger Sony lenses and you want to use them on this lens. Just remember to take this piece off and then you can use them on here. Now, as I said before, this does use an E-mount for its lens and it is big enough to cover a full frame sensor. Thankfully with Sony cameras, all of their cameras are, well the cameras that they still make are E-mount. So if you have an APS-C camera, you can actually use this lens on it, like what I do with my Sony NEX6, which I'm filming with right now. Obviously it is, as you can see here, quite a compact lens. It is, if I just put it on the palm of my hand, you can see it is quite small. Also it's, quite, it's a very light lens, it's under 100 grams, which is quite good for a 35mm f2.8 lens. Now that focal range is going to be obviously quite a wide angle lens on a full frame camera, but on APS-C it's going to be closer to a 50mm lens just over it. And I actually find it quite a good focal length for APS-C cameras. Now this does not have image stabilization in the lens, so hopefully your camera does have some form of in-body stabilization. And even if it doesn't and you're using it on an APS-C camera, it's wide enough to the point where you won't really see any form of the lens sort or your footage being quite shaky. You will get into a problem with it though if you have very unstable hands. Now in terms of the stills that I got with this lens, I'll put them up on screen right now. I have edited them in Lightroom and I'm actually pretty happy with the image quality from this lens. It lacks a little bit of contrast when shooting in JPEGs, however in RAW it's very similar in performance to the 18-55 with less distortion and vignetting. Now I'm going to throw this lens on the NEX6 up here and we'll just do a quick autofocus test to see what its video capabilities are like. Okay, so now we are recording on the Samyang 35mm f2.8 and this is the lens I currently use for video work and it is my Sony 18-55. The reason I use this is because A is only the, uh, is the only other lens I have and it's got very silent autofocus and a pretty close minimum focusing distance of 25cm which is 10cm shorter than the Samyang lens which is 35 Now obviously because it is a prime lens you get the faster aperture of f2.8 so if I put the lens cap here, or the lens bag sorry and then I get this in focus, you can see there's a little bit of depth of field there. It's not a ton, but it's actually, it's not too bad for what you're getting. And it's one of the cheaper 35mm lenses that you can get for Sony cameras, especially in full frame. Now, there's only one problem with this lens, it could just be my model, and that is the autofocus sound. So I'll let you hear it for yourself. As you can hear, it is quite an audible lens. Now, I did get this one used, so it could just be a defect with mine. However, it is something to take into consideration if you're going to be using this as a filming lens. Okay, now that we're back on the Samyang lens, sorry, the Sony lens, we'll talk about the pricing of this lens. So, retail, it is $600 here in New Zealand. However, I got mine used for just under $400. And for $400, it's actually a pretty good deal for a 35mm full-frame lens. Now... Do I recommend this lens? I actually do. You don't get a lot of distortion and vignetting, and you get quite good image quality when you're shooting in RAW. However, it does have some problems in JPEG, at least with um, my camera specifically. It could be different for other Sony cameras. Mine is a little bit older, but this is a really nice 35mm lens that could even replace a 50mm lens because even the Sony 50mm lenses 
for even the APS-C version are still quite a bit bigger than this, probably about this much taller. So this is a lens I definitely recommend if you want maybe a travel lens for just some good street photography, landscapes, or even just a little bit of portrait photography, I think this is a really good all-rounder lens and it works with any Sony camera. So as always, I'll link everything in the description that I talked about in this video and where to buy things. I will include US, UK, as well as New Zealand links for where you can buy this stuff. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, remember to hit that thumbs up button or subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. Catch you guys later. Peace out.